and we're into the game. So let me introduce these two players to everyone in the top, oh, not in the top, in the right position as the Blue Terran, currently teamless, sad face. We do have Poyo. And now his opponent in the left position, playing for Team Druids, the Red Protoss player, we do have Wanna. Now so, we were talking earlier, by the way, Belenor, that mm -hmm. this is an awesome matchup because of the late game. What are your thoughts on PVT? My thoughts on PVT? Um, my thoughts on PVT, well, usually unless the Protoss is really, really, really good and really has crisp execution and goes to micro, usually the Protoss is the defender for the first 12 or 13 minutes. And the Terran has uh, to slow the Protoss down. And then uh, once the game transitions into the later stages, uh, beyond the third base, or when both of them take a third base, it becomes this game of cat and mouse when both of the guys have all the tech that you actually use in this matchup in Wings of Liberty. That means, uh, you know, the uh, Protoss has... Uh, his gateway army with a couple of Colossi and High Templars and Archons and uh, uh, the Terran has Ghosts, Vikings and Bio with Medivax and both of them are trying to keep an eye on their upgrades so that they know if they can take the engagement or not and usually that the later stages of the game really depend on uh, how good each of those players is with their map awareness and uh, army movements and positioning uh, and also reflexes because, you know, trying to feed back a ghost, that's really a matter of milliseconds, as well as trying to EMP or snipe the Templar before you get fed back. So, Can I but on break this in map. Very quickly, uh, something yeah, somewhat go ahead. odd. Uh, we started uh, one hour, went up to 400 minerals, uh, and then he dropped a gateway and immediately went over to. Uh, to drop his, uh, his mm -hmm. nexus. Uh, th that was a bit strange to me because if you're going to sit on so many minerals anyway, why not make the gateway a bit earlier? Um, that's uh, probably. I mean, I can't. There's yeah, no the, reason. There's no yeah. reason you would have done that. It was. It was just one. He wanted to get the nexus down early. He may have changed what he was originally intending on doing. Is my only thought. But po yeah. he's getting um, down his command center as well. So this is definitely going into the late mid game before anything's gonna really happen. So we just need to keep an eye out on what these two do have in store. And particularly, it's. I would argue that the big thing the Wanna has to worry about now is some kind of stim plus one timing push. With, oh yeah. With like two, maybe four medevacs. That's a scary push to hit on this map, um, especially if it's a doom drop into the main, which you mm -hmm. can pull off quite nicely. Um, Wanna though, he's just got to have a couple of interesting things that he can try and do. He could go for some timings. Alternatively, he could just turtle up and try and go for some kind of two base push, which I know Wanna is a fan of doing. Yeah, and on this map I wouldn't expect uh, neither of these players to go more than two bases actually. Maybe the Terran can, but I rather doubt it, and certainly the Protoss will have a very hard time uh, securing the third base and keeping it alive actually, because of the, how the map is laid out. So, I don't know, I, I think if we, if we are going to see a three base versus three base play, it will most probably because both of these guys will decide to do so and we see a third command center out of Poyo so he is indeed thinking at least staying on two bases with uh, you know with a lot of mules and compensating uh, for not having a third base but he will have that saturation up rather quickly and doesn't have to produce as many SCVs as he will have triple orbitals um, but yeah that doom drop as you were saying it's similar in respect to Antigua Shipyard uh, and stim pushes are also difficult to hold. You need a lot of force fields and a lot of units to hold that before you have AOE because if you look how wide the entrance to your natural is, it's insane. So we do have this one very brave zealot trying to come forward. Is unfortunately going to get taken down. Great control by Poyo there, who's building his bunker quite happily, pushing this stalker back though. And he's like, his marines, they're so hardcore that they don't need a bunker. They're just like, you know what? We're fine. We're just going to hold this Zealot Stalker harassment off. Meanwhile, Poyo is getting down his tech lab. We also have Wanna with the Twilight Council just starting and the robotics facility. Hmm. Maybe we will see some... Uh... Oh, I don't know. I, I want to just be... shout out. I want to hope in my mind that it's going to be a war prism for a DT drop. Yeah. But I don't think that's going to happen. 
Yeah, th that's why I was a little bit torn. I was how how f way I'm expecting DT drops, and the other way I'm expecting uh, bl some some sort of blink all in on uh, two bases. So blink all in would be good as well, actually. Blink obs just straight up on mm. that cliff. It's a nice map to do it on, actually. And we do have the pylon coming down, but the SCV is gonna see the probe. Did it? Did it spot it? Did Poyo spot it? He's moving over. Is he? Is he? The other side of the. He goes the wrong yeah, side. Yeah, he's got vision. Did he? Yeah, he sees the pylon. Oh yeah, he did get vision. Ooh. And there was a scan going down, but did not see the Twilight Council actually. Uh, but he did see the Robo facility. So um, I don't know. Maybe if you can fool Poyo into thinking you're going straight Robo Tech without anything else. But I don't. I don't see. I mean, I don't see how DTs can work versus a triple command center build. I think as soon as this observer is going to see... Uh, well, it's 